Okay, good morning, one and all. Ah. Welcome Dr. Dharmendra Seth and Dr. Umesh Pradhan. Friends, the mission of entire Maharashtra English Language Teacher Association is continuous professional development of the teachers in English. Friends, one minute. One minute. Ah. Yeah. Friends, today is 25th June. If you see in the history of India, the 25th June is considered as the black day because of the emergency was imposed to us. But the, in the history of e the 25th June is the bright day. We know very well that in the Hindi movies, when the great actor Dharmendra comes, the darkness of injustice disappear. I'm sure today the darkness of our ignorance will certainly disappear. I welcome Dr. Dharmendra said. Friends, Dr. Dharmendra said is a founder of Fluent Lingua, the Institute for spoken English in Sudan. He has his own site and YouTube channel for developing spoken English. Dr. Dharmendra said is an engineer turned teacher. My dear friend, we know that an engineer loves machine and instruments, whereas a teacher loves human beings, his students and children. Dr. Dharmendra said thought that the human touch in life is better than the touch screen. He is a teacher trainer and a corporate trainer with more than two decades of experience. Apart from the engineering qualification, He did the master degree and the PhD in an English. To his credit, he has ESOL certificate from Wisconsin University, US. He has prepared thousands of learners for tests such as EILTS, TOEFL, and PTA. During his tenure as a national vice president, English Language Teachers Association of India, he was instrumental in strengthening the networks of ELT professionals in India. Such a renowned personality is with us on our email platform. Sir, we welcome you. I request you to address the participants and share your ideas. The screen is yours. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my dear friend, just a minute, sir. Yes, please. Our Facebook, though the Facebook is not working, still we are on Facebook with the help of OBS Studio. Oh, good. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, so thank you very much for the introduction i have my presentation which i will share with you and if somebody can just tell me whether everything is okay yeah okay sir. each and everything is okay audible yeah. visible yeah yeah and the screen the slide that i'm sharing yeah fine yeah yeah 
Okay. During the session, if there is any problem, please let me know. Yeah, surely. Sir. Yeah. So thank you very much for inviting me to this particular August gathering. Mahajan. Yes, sir. Switch, switch off your sharing. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Now this is my actually first slide. In fact, I wanted to show this particular invitation because I'm impressed by this actually. All right, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'll tell you why. Number one, if you see my cursor, the tagline for your association is a unique community striving for excellence. Now, I like that very much. And my introduction must have kindled expectations that I must now live up to. So the word strive is very interesting for me. And I strive for a balance between theory and practice during my session. I also liked this particular part, creating opportunities for CPD, continuing professional development. And I've seen your Facebook page and I'm familiar with the activities that you've been carrying out. I'm impressed. So I feel honored to be invited to such a great group of teachers of English. So first of all, thank you. Welcome, sir. Now, let me begin by seeking blessings of my teachers. Some of you might have met him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Sudhakar Marate, Mrs. Marate. I usually begin my session with their picture on the screen. Now, what is the objective of this particular session? I'm not going to teach you new ways or new ways of learning or increasing vocabulary. Some of the things may be familiar to you, but I'll put it in a different way probably. So that might solidify what you already know. Because different people attend sessions for different reasons. So if you are interested in learning some new ways of improving vocabulary, I will not disappoint you. If you want to solidify whatever you already know, I will not disappoint you. If you are looking for errors in my English, I will not dis disappoint you. So with that background, let's begin. There may be, may be a connectivity issue. So in that case, don't worry, I have plan B and even plan C. So in case something is wrong, please wait and be patient and I'll join using some other device. The duration as I have been asked to speak for about an hour. Uh, normally in face-to-face -face interaction, I take questions on the go. But here probably it will not be possible. So we'll keep questions at the end. And I'm going to share this presentation with all of you at the end of my session. So if you don't try it and just relax and enjoy, that's fine. And my contact details are already given at the bottom. So today I'm here just to make some more friends, to make some new friends. In fact, I saw quite a few familiar names when I saw the screen of all the participants. It's interesting. I'm going to talk about some of my premises beliefs based on my years of experience and my personal struggle, which is May Kampf, my struggle. I'm sure you've read some of, some of you might have read this particular book, May Kampf, Hitler's autobiography, May Kampf, my struggle. And we're going to do some activities. And why have I selected activities? Because last Sunday on 21st, I led a part of a webinar for Altai Pune chapter. 
at that time i talked about research then theoretical aspects of vocabulary so some of you if you are interested in research or some theoretical aspects of vocabulary teaching and learning then you might refer to my youtube channel on which i have posted the video of my particular part and you can ask me any questions at the end but i don't want you to ask me three questions and you know why first you will not ask me spellings you will not ask me meaning and you will not ask me pronunciation because as you already know these three things are illogical right very often english behaves in an illogical way so these three questions i will not be able to entertain but of course any other topic about vocabulary teaching or learning then we'll discuss now let me begin by premises can somebody say unmute and say whether everything is okay it's okay sir very yeah, good fine yeah, fine fine because you know once it so happened that i continued my presentation because i am not able to see participants now yes so i kept on speaking and speaking and after 15 minutes i got a phone call and actually my phone was switched off at that time so somebody phoned my uh, member of the family and said that you you are disconnected so i hope everything is okay now and my first premise is words in isolation have no fixed meaning but meaning potential what does it mean it means that when somebody asks me the meaning of any word i cannot give any answer unless and i until i know in what context that word is used and what are the other words around that particular word so context is the situation and the context the words around that particular word if i don't know these two things i cannot answer that question so if you ask me the meaning of a word i will say where that's the way my teachers also ask me where right so the situation and the context that will give you the actual meaning otherwise if i say if somebody asks me the meaning of right then in his mind or he may be looking for right and left in the direction he might be thinking about right or wrong right so we don't know if you ask me the meaning of point then you might be asking about decimal decimal point or point and shoot camera point right don't point at others so that point so we never know so this is one of my premises words without context and cortex we can never study and the premise is we can never do enough to improve our vocabulary i know i have been studying english for more than 20 years seriously systematically but even today every day i come across some new words or some new shades of meanings of old words some new expressions some new ways of using the same word so we can never ever do enough to improve our vocabulary it's a lifelong process and people say variety is the spice of life and i would say vocabulary is the spice of language now in all presentations normally i try to do something different so those who attended my last session a week ago or maybe 15 days ago there was another session on vocabulary even for you i have something new so today for this particular group of teachers in maharashtra i have decided to talk on three keys and if i ask you to tell me what these three keys are can somebody write in the chat box what do you mean by or what do i mean by these three keys www and that way we'll be able to check whether the chat option is working properly what does it mean by www what three keys i am going to talk about just a wild guess if you can write in the chat box please 
Okay, somebody has started writing. Shweta says World Wide Web. Somebody else? So that chat option is working because in the next activity, we are going to use that chat op option. Yes, somebody whose name is 1KMCU, I don't know. So what, why, and when? Somebody else says World Wide Web. Yes. Any other response, please? Mm, Harsha says, uh, wonderful word, word. Why, why, where? Jyoti Vasudev. Okay, fine. So now, Chaya, we know that this chat option is working. And now I will tell you what three W's I have in mind. There's nothing right or wrong, so all your answers are fine. Okay. So these are the three keys I'm going to talk about. In fact, if I look back, of, uh, look back at my way of studying vocabulary, these are the things I've done. And in fact, these are the things I do every day, every hour of my study. So first is look at the world. Now you might laugh and say, what does it mean? How does it work as a strategy? So I'm going to explain in detail, don't worry. Second, look at the word. Now you might say, I look at the words every day, what's new? Even right now I'm looking at the word. But how to look at the word, that I'm going to discuss in detail. And the third key which I'm going to discuss today is look at the wealth. Right? Now let's see how. Oh, sorry. What do you see on the screen? You can write in the chat box. Look at the word. So below, look at the world. What do you see? Can you write in the chat box, please? Oh, sorry. Yes, many people have started responding. Sky and clouds, Sanjeevani, Deshmadeni, Nimba, Shelja. Yeah, Sanjay, Shela. Yeah, fine. So lots of people have started responding. So the chat option is okay. Now, what is the difference between a trained learner of English and an untrained learner of, learner of English? If you are a trained learner of English, then you will try to go a little deeper behind the scenes. So everyone knows this is a picture showing some clouds, that's fine. But now we want to go one step further. When you look at the sky, you see different kinds of clouds, right? They're not all the same, they're different. And if things are different, there is a possibility that they will have different words. And in fact, English is such a rich language that for everything that is different, you will invariably get a word. So here, if I look at the clouds, then I see what type of cloud is it? Now for that, you need to explore and find out. So right now I'm showing you in the next slide, these are the common you know, words used in describing clouds. So the first is cumulus cloud. You can see in children's literature, you must have seen one cloud and on that another cloud and then another cloud, right? So that is called cumulus cloud. It has a flat base and rounded shape. Then you see the second, cirrus. They are very far in the, in the sky and very soft, fluffy, feathery cloud. So that is called cirrus. If the cloud is very near and full of, full of water, dark, gray, then it is nimbus. And the nearest, the nearest to our earth, a kind of flat, is stratus. So what is important here? The importance is of looking at things a little more carefully and trying to identify or find out, actually explore and find out the right word to describe that particular thing. 
Okay, so that is one of the keys to improving your vocabulary and your, in the sense, your students' vocabulary. This is one of the techniques. And in fact, I am of the opinion that this particular technique should be used at all levels of study. Now let's go one step further. Let's play a quiz. You will have to use your chat box to answer some of the quiz items. It's a very interesting quiz. You can play with your uh, students and even members of the family, right? Are you all ready? I want to see your chat box as well. Are you all ready? You can write in your chat box if you are ready. Yes, perfect. Kavita, you are the first to say yes. Fine. Arsa as well. Okay. So when you are ready, let's start the quiz. And look at the arrow carefully in each picture that I'm going to show you. And then in the chat box, you can share an answer with everyone. Don't worry, there is nothing right or wrong. No marks, no medals. So experiment with your memory, right? The first item. You don't have to speak. You have to write in the chat box. And you have to write about exactly what the arrow indicates. Okay, I can see quite a few responses. Yes, quite a few responses. Very nice. I'm very happy with the response. Very active participants. Yes, I can see lots of responses. Very nice. Okay. Okay, now we are going to the next item. We'll take 10 items and at the end I'll give you all the answers. Don't worry. Second. During this lockdown time, many people must have played using this. In fact, I also played that after years, years, years. You can write your answers in the chat box. And when you write, don't see what others have written. <laughs> Okay, fine. Fine. Okay, now let's go to the next item. Third item now. Actually, I could have shown. So I want to go for that particular shape. Next. Fourth picture now. We'll do it a little faster now since you have mastered typing. Fourth picture now. Not many responses for the fourth picture now. Yeah, Jagatra has started. Chandrakant has responded. Come on, fast. Yes. Neelam. Okay, let's uh, go to the next one. Fifth item. You can see those arrows. I'm sure everyone has seen that. In fact, in my area, if I go to any street, at the end of the street, I'll find somebody who is there to repair your shoes. And he uses some particular thing, and I want a word for that. You can start writing in your chat box in your own way. Yes, I'm going to the next picture now. Every teacher knows that. 
much, right? Sometimes students, they dirty the entire class with this. And suppose you want to give a piece of instruction to your students, what word will you use for this? Okay, now the next one, seventh. I'm sure everyone has used a belt. Some of you might be wearing a belt now. But to fasten the belt, you will use something which is shown in the picture. So what is that something called? You're marching towards the end of the quiz. You have 10 items. I hope you're writing in the chat box. Next, number eight. If you go on a highway where we have chemical industries, plastic and chemical industries, you will definitely find something like this on the top of a building, very high above. And that tells people what to do in certain situations. Okay, next one. I'm sure everyone has used a candle sometime or the other, right? And look at the, the arrow carefully. I want a word precisely for the part which is in the center. I don't want the word candle here, please. Right, the last word now on the screen. Yes. In many dresses, you might have seen this. Girls are very fond of this. In their dresses, they would like to keep certain things. They are available in various colors, actually. I'm sure you know, gold and silver and all different colors. Okay, so <clears throat> Jyoti has raised hand, yes. <laughs> okay, so are you ready for the answers now? Let's start. So the first thing that you saw was owning. I have written the description from a dictionary. I have written the meaning also from a dictionary. So please don't doubt anything. <laughs> Even the pronunciation that you see, it is in IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. So it is from, I use normally Cambridge and Macmillan dictionaries. So this is from Cambridge or Macmillan, I don't know. But owning, it's a cloth or plastic cover attached to a structure for protection from the sun and rain. In fact, in Surat, when we have any big festival, in many restaurants, they start on many sweet shops and for some, you know, spicy things. So they, they prepare some structure like this and they sell it outside their shop because there's a lot of crowd. So I'm sure you have seen that in your place as well. Second, yeah, some of you rightly uh, responded to this. It's a cowrie shell. Cowrie is a small sea creature and around that you have that shell. And in olden times, some people say that it was used as a kind of currency but we use it to play different kinds of games in fact I, I used to play with it when I was a child and during this lockdown again I used uh, cowrie shells to play and this particular structure semicircle kind of structure on the top it is called a canopy even on the top of a tree there is a possibility of that structure canopy in fact, in Surat, uh, I don't know about other parts of the country, but in Surat, many banks, they have, they once started their loan campaign. So they kept canopies on the, not on the roads, but on the pavements, and they invited people to talk to them, share their requirements, and they would do some formalities there and then. Even mobile accessories are sold on the pavements and they sit under a canopy. I'm sure it's a, a common uh, scene everywhere. Then this 
garden tool tool a rake using this you can collect all the leaves that are falling on the ground i believe many people here in this room right now they may be from some rural areas so they might have seen this particular tool in fact i used that when i was a child and this cobbler you must have seen this person using the thing called anvil so using that that person would hold a shoe while repairing or making the next is shavings very common you throw shavings in that dustbin at least you should and if students don't then you have to tell them that throw your shavings in the dustbin right next this pointed part that you used to fasten your belt is called prong a prong i'm sure that prong is in many other things as well but i found this very near to our experience i used this particular picture and when so on the top of any building in industrial area you might see this in chemical factories for example it's compulsory because if there is a chemical leakage or if there is a fire then the then the people working inside the factory they would look at the top and they would see the direction of the wind and they would run perpendicular in that particular wind sock to save their life so it's so important for human beings we also have our socks we put them on on our feet but here it is for the wind so it is wind sock if you have traveled on the by like by road you must have seen it on highways where there is a factory and in the middle of a candle you have a wick right that supplies fuel to a flame it may be a candle it may be another type of uh, lighting device so you find a wick now be careful because here it is a wick it's a short sound it's not a weak because when we talk about vocabulary we'll have to talk about sounds and pronunciation and everything so wick and weak every week that is w w e and k and he is not strong he is weak w e a k but this is wick and sequin sequin you might have seen you might have used right it's a plastic disc kind of thing and it's available in multiple colors very interesting okay so that was the first activity and what's your score now mind that doesn't matter <laughs> so let's go to the second key can somebody unmute and just say that everything is okay yeah you know yeah fine 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 yes okay so now the second key is look at the word now teachers are very interested in this look at the word now let's start with a very simple word which everyone knows and in fact if uh, we were face to face i would have asked you to speak this word but anyway right now i am speaking this word is preposition the word is preposition it's a grammatical term you know that now if i ask you to break this word divide it into parts break it so i'm sure you would break it between e and p right between e and p so you will say three is one part and position is another part that means this word is made up of two words one is position and the second is pre now you ask anyone any child that child will say pre is a very common word pre means before pre primary right even preparation right so pre is before and position is a place now if you look at this particular word preposition in this way you will understand something about the you know logic why this word is called a preposition now i'm going to give you some phrases and you try to translate in your mother tongue in fact in most uh, indian languages except sanskrit this will be true 
So you try to translate in your own way, in your mind. And tell me what is the last word in your translation. Okay. And if you have somebody around you, you can in fact speak and talk to that person. You can confirm your answer. Var, khali, at. Right. Patimagi. So the words, the translation for the words in the boxes on the left, on, in, under, and behind, they are at the end in our Indian languages. Right. So in English, their position is before the noun that they refer to. Like something is on the table. So on what? The table. So the table is the object that is our item in question. And before that object, we write the word on. Whereas in Indian languages, it is exactly the opposite. Right? That's the way languages differ. Differ, differ. Yeah. And uh, I said in the beginning uh, that you cannot apply this rule to Sanskrit because in Sanskrit there is no sequence, there is no structure. I'm sure you know in Sanskrit we don't have like subject, verb, object, that kind of pattern. Am Sultam Sanskritam Janami, Janami Sultam Sanskritam Am, Am Janami Sultam Sanskritam, they are all the same. So there the, the way of conveying meaning is different, whereas in English, English is a structure sensitive language. Right. So this is the way you look at the word. Now let's go one slightly advanced or intermediate level word. I'm sure you have seen this word. I'm using right now. Many of you also using, I can see that. Yes. So, practicals, right? Now I want you to look at this word carefully and try to find out if you have seen any other word which has some part of this particular word. And I would be happy if you can write that particular word Spectre. in the chat box. You can type in the chat box rather than speaking because muting and muting will be a, a terrible thing. So you can think about any word that has some part of this particular word. Yes, yeah, somebody started writing. I want you to give me English language words where some part of this particular word is used. Dr. Dharminta said. Hello, doctor. Hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Please type the word in the chat box. Sir. Yes, please. Uh, uh, keep your microphone a little bit away. Away from me. Okay, 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 okay. Creating some vibration. Little bit away. Yes, let me see if it is better. Is it better in some way? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I will now tell you why I selected this particular word. And in fact, if you master this particular technique of increasing vocabulary, your vocabulary will multiply like anything, and even your students' vocabulary. In fact, in the last uh, seminar, the, uh, the last uh, webinar that I conducted, I talked about a particular book. In that book, using only 14, one and four, 14 words, the writer taught 14,000 words. Can you imagine? Just using 14, one, four, 14 words, 14,000 words were taught. And the technique was just this, look at the word carefully. Now this is a way of looking that you will develop over a period of time. So when I look at words, normally I see, is there any part which I'm familiar with? And when I saw this word, I realized that yes, I know about the words spect in suspect. I know about spectacular. I know about spectators. 
So spat is common here. And that told me, uh, a few examples told me that this particular spat is connected with seeing. So now you think about any word containing S-P-E-C-T and the meaning will be connected with seeing. So you can say spectrum, spectrometer, spectacles, even spectacle, it was a nice spectacle, right? Specter and hundreds of words based on the same root. And you'll be surprised to find even common words, like when you say, I respect my teachers. So the word respect, spec means see that you already understood and re means again and again, you retry, you redo something. So when you respect somebody, that means you look at that person again and again. When you suspect somebody, sus is another root from sub, so under, so you doubt somebody. If there is a crime, the inspector will come and inspect, he will carry out his inspection, right? Sometimes people say this lockdown time is for introspection. You have to look within you, introspection. And if your company hasn't been doing well for some years, so you might say, we need to do retrospection. We have to look behind. So there are hundreds of words based on the same root. So let me show you some of them. Okay, if you have seen them, I will show you some more words. And the list is not complete. Right? These are the words that came to my mind when I was making this presentation. But I'm sure there are many, many words more than that. So what is important is here, from one root spec, if you know that root, you can know hundreds of un unknown words also, unfamiliar words also, right? Now, have you ever thought that the word prospectors, which you give to your students when they come to your college or university, that prospectors is also based on the same root, right? Prospective clients, speculate in the stock market if you are interested, speculate. So all these words are connected with spect to see. Now let me go to the next word. Another word, port. I'm sure you've heard the word port. On the seashore you have a port, Mumbai is a port. Surat is also a port, right? So port is something at the end, uh, like on the seashore. Now think about the words that you know where the word port is used. I want you to write them in the chat box, if possible. Yes, you can write any word that comes to your mind, your mind where the word chat, word port is used, port. Yes, excellent. Portion, export, transport, export, airport, uh, import, report. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So port, it's not always necessary that the word port, whenever there is a, uh, that word is in a port, it always is always connected with that port, no. But largely you will find that study of root words is very helpful. Whatever comes in is import, whatever goes out is export. If you are a manufacturer, you send goods from Surat to Bangalore, then you use transport. If you want to go to America, you have to go to the airport. Before you go to the airport, in your hand you require a passport, right? Something that you can carry from one place to the other. It is portable. Right? If there is a criminal, you send him away from this place. So that is deport, D means away from, right? So from one, just one root, you can think about hundreds of words. So that method is called look at the word carefully, right? Now third item today is look at the wealth, wealth. That means every word has 
multiple shades of meaning multiple situations in which it is used so that is the wealth right yes now let's take a very common word bar i am sure you have seen a bar of chocolate right now that word bar can be used in many ways it can be a place where drinks are available so you can bar somebody from doing something right you can say sometimes age is no bar education no bar you know when you when you read matrimonials some people say education no bar caste no bar right then another is if you commit a crime the police might put you behind bars so that's another bar and what we are doing right now is we are trying to raise the bar we are trying to set a new standard for our vocabulary another common use is barring something means accept this particular thing so now you can see the word bar is so productive it has so many shades of meaning there is such a lot of wealth so here i would like to say one thing keeping this presentation aside for a minute when people think about in increasing their vocabulary the word power most people say read a lot listen to a lot and then you will come across many new words then you look them up in a dictionary you find out the meanings you see how example sentence how they are used in, in in sentences so that's the way you can learn a lot of words fine that's fantastic but that's not the only way to improve your word power even if you take commonly used words and see uncommon meanings or different shades of meaning you will be surprised right this is just one word bar i have taken about 200 words they are all available on our website uh, if you go to fluentlingua.com website and if you go to free material section and if you see pictures in that we have put about 200 words my colleagues and i we have selected 200 commonly used words for example bath and pen and um, any ordinary word like crank and bottle and what we have done is we have tried to give different shades of meaning of those commonly used words so that is also one of the ways of in, in increasing your word power right anyway coming back to our um, presentation yes uh, somebody says ba of the advocacy in the legal field yes in fact that was the last item here which i have removed I, because there were eight items here it was called the ba yes now let's see another word yeah barricade somebody rightly mentioned that word also so now you have started opening all the you know removing all the blocks let's take another word common word pip everyone has seen this real apple not this particular mobile i'm talking about the apple real apple so when you cut an apple into two you will see pips in it it's a very common word pip now let's see how it is used apple pips is the commonest like seeds that's okay but the pips and the dice when you play some game in during this lockdown you might have played using those dice and then the dice also your numbers 1 2 3 right in a particular pattern so there are also pips then suppose you uh, take part in a race and you are about to win but at the 11th hour at the last moment something happens and you lose somebody else wins so you can say he pip me at the post so another use of pip the nine o'clock pips and somebody's behavior might give you the pip so that person might annoy you so very common words but with uncommon and interesting meanings that's a very powerful way to improve vocabulary it is the wealth so here you just in two words right and if you want more words about 200 words you go to our website no registration no mobile number nothing just go and start using it and you can share with anyone no need to give even credit for for that because ultimately knowledge is knowledge right whatever i have learned obviously my teachers have taught me right 
So use this material and enjoy. Next. And somebody might ask me, why work so hard on vocabulary? Students are also sometimes uh, confused. They keep you. They ask you. And you might say, vocabulary is important because in any language, ultimately, what do you have? In any language, ultimately, you have two things: words and how they are put together. So words and structure, right? So why work so hard? Then a genuine answer. A genuine answer. Maybe some some of you have already started responding to that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wonderful case. Thank you for better understanding. Okay. Now, uh, why work so hard? Let me give you my response. Like when I tell my students and friends, does a large vocabulary help in any way? If your answer is yes, then how? And I will say, if you have a large vocabulary, you can see more. Does it mean that your eyesight will improve? No. But once you know more words, you will be able to see things that many people have failed to see. For example, today we talked about four words for clouds. So next time when you see clouds in the sky, your brain will automatically start processing, and you will say, "Is that serious?" Because it's very far up in the sky, fluffy like cotton, so it must be serious. If it is near, uh, if it's full of water, dark gray, then you will say, "Ah, that is nimbus." So earlier also you saw that, right? But earlier for you, they all were clouds, but now you know you have more words, so you are able to see more than an average person. Obviously, you will hear more. For example, one of the one of my favorite activities is I take different kinds of sounds. I record them like this. You know, I make some sounds and record that, and then I make a list of sounds in a word file, and one by one I play and I ask students, "What sound is it?" And you'll be surprised to find if you look up in say Reader's Digest book that uh, what enrich your word power. So for sounds, they get more than two hundred words. So now, if you don't have two hundred words, then for you it may be good or bad, or sharp and shrill. Sure, that's it. But there are hundreds of words. So with more vocabulary, you'll be able to hear more. You'll be able to read more. Obviously, every teacher knows that. Because if you read, for example, I, I remember once I, uh, by mistake, I told one of my students to read Pride and Prejudice. Now I had not really analyzed that person's vocabulary. I just said. I was in a hurry, probably. So he asked me what novel should I read. So I said, "Go for Pride and Prejudice." Jane Austen. He read <laughs> the first page, and after three, four days, he said, "Sorry, sir, I can't read because every word has three, four new words." So if you have poor vocabulary, you will obviously not read much, right? And the other way around, if you have more words, you will enjoy reading, so you'll continue reading. If you have more words, you can think more. It is scientifically proved. In fact, those people who are leaders in their respective fields, they uh, have more thoughts actually, right? Yeah, yeah. Somebody has given me examples of uh, the sounds clang and clatter. Are very good, a excellent. And if you have more words, that was Ganesh uh, Tram. Fine. The next is if you have more words, you will understand more. That's for sure. Nobody can doubt, challenge that. You can express more. Obviously, you have lots of things in your mind. Any situation, when you have to describe that, you will require words. And if you don't have the right word at the right time, what do you do? You take a near synonym, right? So you. Can you be able to express more and clearly? As somebody has mentioned in the chat box, you will be able to express clearly, exactly, the the message, the idea that you have in your brain. You will be able to transplant in your listeners or readers' mind if you have the right words. The next is somebody may say, if you have more words, you will be able to live more. Well, I am not really sure about that. But I'm sure about one thing: that if you have more words, you will be able to live better. 
that's for sure. All right. Now, we have established that we should know a lot of words. But then how many words should we know? That is another question. Very often people ask me, students, teachers, they ask me, how many words should I know? Then instead of giving my opinion based on my intuition, what I did, I did some research. And on the basis of the research, I found out that to understand most forms of speech, you require 3,000 most frequently used word families. Right? Some researchers may give a figure slightly around that, 2,800 or 3,400, but around 300. And not just words, word families. So if you know the word compete, that's not enough. You must know compete, competition, competitive, competitively, uncompetitive. So when you know the, the entire family of that word, then you can say yes, you can count that in this most frequently used word, uh, most word, frequently used word family, right? M, F, W, F. Now, one step further. This was about speaking, speaking, listening to speaking and understanding is easy, but what about reading? So if you want to read most forms of written text, it may be a newspaper, a general magazine article, right? Uh, novels, not like Jane Austen, obviously, but some simple novels, or maybe Jane, Jane Austen, because 8,000 is a big number. 8,000 most frequently used word families. That's your target. That should be your target. Then, if you want to become equivalent in terms of competence, vocabulary, lexical resource competence, then you require about 15,000 word families. And these are not my numbers. These are based on, I think, Paul Nation in one of his book has written, Paul Nation, one of the greatest authorities in terms of vocabulary research. You read any article by Paul Nation and it will be interesting, I guarantee. So he has given 15,000 word families. And to be a teacher of English, how many? <laughs> you decide, I leave it to you. Yeah. How many words? In fact, I can say the more the better, right? There's no end to it. Yes, somebody has written in the chat box. Let me see what that person says. Okay. Now, another question. Suppose you say, I know a word. I know this particular word. Or I know 20 words or 2,000 words. And what does it mean? What do you know when you say you know a word? Now, again, I'm taking name of Paul Nation. He has beautifully given the list of items that you, sh you should know if you want to say you know a word. Yes, now let me... Okay, now when you say you know a word, that means you can recognize the spoken form of the word. That means when that word is spoken in connected speech, you are able to identify, huh, yes, this is the word. For example, if I say the weather in England can change very quickly. So when I say can change, you must know that there is no word in English like C-O-N-C-H-A-N-G-E, but the speaker is using two words, can and change. But because it is in connected speech, it is spoken as can change. So this ability to recognize the spoken form of the word, that is a part of knowing a word. Second, being able to pronounce the word. And there are wonderful, fantastic stories about that. You know, I gave a passage to read to some student a long time ago. And that student, he came to me and he said, so what is Champagne? Now, as far as I remember, there was no word like that in that particular passage. So I said, no, there is no word, let me see. So I saw the word in that passage and the word was champagne, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, being able to is also an important skill. That is, is a part of knowing the word, according to Paul Nation, right? Being able to spell the word. Now I'll go a little faster because I'm sure we are running out of time. Being able to write the word, knowing the underlying meaning of the word. What is the core meaning? That's very important. When you use the word green, for example, 
And what is the core meaning, the color? And it may be used for different things to convey different meanings. So underlying meaning is so important, right? So the next is knowing the range of meanings of the word. Like when you say the word pen, the pen is not just a piece of, uh, you know, that stationary item that you write with. You can use it to mean different things. Knowing the grammatical patterns the word fits into. As you know, certain words are used in a certain grammatical pattern only. For example, I like to play cricket. I love to play cricket. Possible. But I enjoy to play cricket, not possible. Because the word enjoy, it forces you to use a particular pattern. Enjoy plus verb ing. So grammatical pattern of a word, that's also very important. In fact, I go to the extent of saying that we have two kinds of grammar. One is sentence grammar, right? Ren Martin kind and Nesfield kind of grammar, where tenses and voice and direct indirect speech and all these sentence related grammar points are given, right? So that forms that probably five to 10% of the English grammar. And the remaining 95% or 90% is word grammar. So that's an important area of study, of vocabulary. Then affixation, you are, you know, English is a very smart language like Sanskrit. It creates new words. So from nation, you can have national, nationalized, nationalization, international, internationalizationism, pro anti internationalizationism. You can create all, all kinds of words. Obviously, you will not create so many like this, but it is a very powerful process. And knowledge about that is also important. Then the lexical set, for example, when you are speaking and if you want to use a particular word, but it so happens that you forget that word, then what do you do? If you don't know another synonym, you will stop there. So knowing the, the entire lexical set that that particular word fits into will improve your fluency, right? So for example, if there is somebody who is very rigid, you want to say he is very, and then you forget the word. So what do you do? You can use some other word, inflexible, uncompromising, adamant, you know, stubborn, right? Unyielding, uncompromising. So there are many words that you can use in place of rigid. So that is the lexical set, right? And then knowing the typical associations of the word, what does this word, uh, how is that word associated with other words? Right? That's also a very, very important part of knowing a word. That's not enough. We are still uh, in the last leg of that knowing a word. Knowing the range of collocations. Collocations means word partnerships, word friendship. Every word has either one or two or 10 or 15, but fixed collocations. Some are very strong collocations and some are weak collocations. Strong, for example, inclement. The word inclement, you will use only and only for weather. Very bad weather. So for that, you will use inclement weather. Now you not use the word inclement for a food item or a person. So it's a very strong collocation, right? So now whether the use of the word is limited by various considerations like politeness, gender, age. For example, if you are making a speech on a stage in a formal situation, I will not use words like cop or guys or loads of, such words are not good for you know, formal situations. When I'm writing a, a formal email or a report, I will not say, uh, give me a tinkle when you're free. No, that is for spoken, right? So politeness, like when you, when you enter your boss's cabin, you will say, may I come in, sir? So then may is a polite form. And if you want to use your friend's phone, you can say, can I use your phone for a minute? So can is, in, is informal, friendly. So such considerations are also part of knowing a word. And it is important to know whether this particular word is in common use or not. If it is not in common use, even if you know that word, there is no point using that because many people will not understand, right? They are called highfalutin words. So use them only when you want to make fun of somebody or when you want to you know, and, uh, generate some kind of fun. At that time, it's okay. 
instead of saying I'm a teacher, if I say I'm a pedagogue, no, that is not a commonly used word. So I would avoid using that. And being able to use the word receptively and productively. That means when somebody speaks, you should be able to understand that word. And when you need, you should be able to produce that word. So these are the things that uh, Paul Nation said about knowing a word. Now here I end my first part and probably uh, it depends on now the organizers because I was given one hour and I think I have spoken for more than one hour. So I should respect your time. I'll stop uh, presenting. Let me stop my presentation. I don't know. Stop sharing screen. Yes. Uh, I have to stop here. There is in red color. Upside. Stop sharing. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so this was part one, part two, and part three sometime other, some other time maybe. Yeah, but yeah. I hope it is useful in some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. It was a very interactive session because the through uh, chat box, all the participants were and it was a brainstorming session. We have now got the different ideas of being vocabulary. Uh, thank you very much, sir. It was a great session. I request Dr. Pradhan to say, yeah, Dr. Pradhan sir, please. <laughs> it was a really a treat to listen to you, sir. A modest and soft-spoken person, Dr. Dharmendra said, I really salute you for the way in which he had dealt with the topic of dealing with the vocabulary. I have words blindly. Since they know the different words, but they don't know which word is to be used where. And as it is important to enrich our vocabulary, at the same time, it's very important to know uh, where to use that particular word. Unless you are not sure about where to use, uh, most of the time what I have found is that the people go on using the words without knowing the exact meaning of it. Say for example, uh, people have been using the words like uh, when they introduce the um, speaker, they say a stalwart, and a legendary personality, a reverend person, a chivalrous, a gallantry. Now look at all these adjectives used by the people. <laughs> they are there in the dictionary, but when to use what and to which person you will be using uh, what kind of word while introducing, people are a bit confused since they don't know the where to use the, that particular word. Sir, your presentation was a practical lesson for all our teachers of how to deal with online teaching. That is how to involve the, the listeners and not to make them just passive listeners, but uh, involving them in, in the whole process of your session of your speech. So that was a really a uh, very nice lesson for all of us. Most of the time, what what is being done in classes, classrooms, is that under the name of vocabulary, people tend to translate the words. It's the easy way out that I take the word and I translate it in the mother tongue. And then I feel that I'm happy that I have taught. Now, you have rightly pointed out that contextualization of words is very, very important. We all the time treat words vocabulary separately differently and that creates the problem that's why we have rightly used the word glossary in our textbooks in our course books so uh, by the difference uh, between the dictionary and glossary the teachers are very well aware of it the same thing is uh, what you have said is about grammar as well and the teachers have to make a note of it that as sir has said 
that contextualization of words is very important when you are learning vocabulary in the same way uh, it's very important to contextualize grammar also uh, therefore the study of words is important but can we learn vocabulary in isolation that's uh, that's my worry that's my problem like uh, we talk about word register and then uh, how many teachers are well aware of these registers of uh, different types and the field for example uh, i feel that the teachers should always ask a question why for example when you are reading a poem you should be always asking a question why why the writer has used this particular word and not that that uh, other word which is also there uh, having the same kind of feeling or having the same kind of thing i i remember uh, that my teacher has said that there are no same meanings in english there are similar meanings in english so it is said that in english they know there are no synonyms in a real sense in fact in any language for that matter in fact that is true about uh, most of the languages and uh, very well sir i remember my teacher has also said right refer to a dictionary when you are in problem no doubt why do we refer to a dictionary but then the next part of what he had said was very remarkable and very important he he said that uh, refer to a dictionary when you are not in problem so that we should form as a habit because uh, once i remember uh, in the time of uh, uh, say a meeting in of the moderators chief moderators and we were stuck with the words uh, certain words and then we refer to a dictionary and then it it uh, it it dawned upon us that for all these years we have been considering this as the meaning and no that is not not the meaning that is exactly the different thing uh, uh, say uh, a different one and then uh refer to a dictionary so uh, i had written one small piece of article a passage if you want to qualify yourself as english teacher in your personal library you must have a dictionary a thesaurus and one more book as i suggest and that is language activator by longman now that language activator by longman it really uh, gives you all those things that you have said Uh, in your session today that how strolling is different from walking and how there are shades of walking is walking but then how would a, a drunk person would walk and how a pregnant woman would walk and how uh, a soldier would walk all those things there are different different words for that and that would really enrich our sense once i referred to dictionary for the meaning of preposition in and to um, to my surprise i found that the preposition the meaning of the word, preposition it runs for almost two and a half pages in a dictionary so how many of us are aware of all those shades of meaning i really Thank wonder really saying sir you have given us a, uh, an insight for uh, as teacher what to do with words and i feel that all our teachers will reach their course books will reach uh, will read their course books and will read their textbooks fresh again with this perspective in mind that why that word is used and what is the real meaning of that word there so thank you very much sir for your uh, expert uh, way of looking at the whole thing and the depth thank you my pleasure it's my pleasure that you had given thank you very much sir thank you sir dr pradhan thank you very much uh, it's a request to all the participants if you have a questions please please ask questions you are free to ask the questions yeah ah uh, one me urmila ma'am yes unmute urmila ma'am yeah those urmila madam please unmute your microphone and you can ask your question yes elikita Yeah. Sir, I don't want to ask any questions. This is very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Nirmala, ma'am, do you have a question? No. Yeah. You can write in the chat box also if possible. It doesn't yeah. matter. There is a question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the session was absolutely 
it was uh, behind the limit whatever we expected that you have managed very well and uh, really i think that we have to enrich our vocabulary and will definitely do that hats off to you sir thank you so much thank you my yeah. pleasure yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the chat box i uh, there are no questions sir they are always uh, they are just saying sir there is one question from facebook, facebook. there is one okay, from facebook facebook yeah. facebook okay. there is yeah. one question from facebook ma da unmute zala hota na mala sonal chavan sonal chavan from facebook okay Yeah, she asked, "Can you suggest the technique to retain the new word learnt?" Oh, good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that interesting question. I hope the question is clear to everyone. Once you have learnt a word, how do you retain that word? Right. That is the question. Now, if you think about our memory, our memory. so we can remember things in three ways in fact we have three types of memory as as far as vocabulary is concerned one is acoustic memory that means you hear the word and then you remember it the sound cloud actually in fact the modern research using all the modern gadgets with mri and fmri and what not so they are to understand what actually happens when you come across a new word what actually happens when you understand a word what actually happens when you take more time and when you don't understand it use some strategies so all these things are scientifically registered you know today we have such material such technology so one of the ways is you hear that word again and again and you remember that right second is visual memory the word that you see again and again in fact that is the reason why in primary schools or in nursery schools you will find on walls they write 10 words a day next day another 10 words so when students see those words again and again their visual memory will work and the same thing happens in graded readers if you have seen graded readers there is a list of uh, words and those words are given in the top and the same words are used in the story and the same words are used in the activities so they students see those words again and again and they are registered permanently in their brain so first was the acoustic memory here and remember in fact in acoustic i would like to add one more point here acoustic does not mean individual letters i'm talking about a very primary level student nursery school or junior kg So, for example, if you want to teach the uh, spelling of a word "neighbor," and if you say "any a g s b o u r," that child will never ever be able to remember that. So, you have to break them, break the word into manageable parts. So, you can say "any a g h b o u r." So, when you make three sound clouds, so those sound clouds will be retained in the brain of a child. He will not remember the whole thing. Right? That is human. so acoustic visual and the third memory which in fact most teachers love why because they want to give homework write this word 10 times so that memory is your kinesthetic memory your fingers also have some memory for example if you ask me right now the spelling of a word a difficult word maybe i'll fail to write the spelling uh, sorry i'll fail to tell you the spelling orally but if you ask me to write then probably i'll be able to write so my fingers also know where to go from where so that is kinesthetic memory so i i, I suggest using all these three types of memory that is one thing and second the wealth you remember a word by the wealth of it if you know more shades of meaning more situations in which this particular word is used if you know more collocations of that particular word then you will re retain that word just last example for this i'm sure you have heard the word poverty you have read the word you have heard the word poverty now if you want to describe poverty you want to use a word before poverty and you want to convey the meaning extreme right so you want a word which conveys the meaning of extreme now what would you what word would you use now here if you have seen or read or heard a lot of good quality english you will immediately say the right word for this situation is 
abject. Many people in India, for example, they live in abject poverty. So abject is the right word, which is so widely used again and again. So your visual memory will say, yes, abject. Your acoustic memory will say, yes, I heard this word again and again, abject. So that is the only way you re retain. Uh, Shanti. Shanti is another word? Uh, there may be a couple of other, but poverty, abject word. You can just do a, you know, there is a, so in yeah, fact, my second abject. part of the word, in the second yes. part of my presentation, yes. I spent some time on collocations and I've given a website. There is a website called British National Caucus. You can Google it and you can find out the actual link address. So in British National Caucus, if you write the word or a phrase, it will tell you how often this particular word or phrase is used in authentic corpuses. It is not Google search, it is authentic corpus search. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. One, one more question from uh, Facebook, sir. Yes, yes, please. Shiva Venkat uh, Pathi asks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is there any list of vocabulary <laughs> frequently used in spoken or written uh, language, written English? Yes, yes, very. Uh, in fact, in this work, I'm sure so the senior teachers who did MA a long time ago, and if we had, if they had some component of ELT, they might have heard general service word list of Michael West. Hmm. So Michael West, when he was in India, he did a lot of research on vocabulary, and he made a list of about 2,200 or 700 words commonly used words, right? That's an old thing. You may get it online, you may not. But what is available now is called defining vocabulary. If you take any dictionary, for example, Oxford, Macmillan, uh, Cambridge Online, right? Longman, they all have their own defining vocabulary. So those defining words, that means the words which are used to define any word in a dictionary, that's a defining vocabulary. And that will be around 3000 to 3500, right? So these are the words most frequently used and likely to be familiar to most people across the world. And if you know those words, then probably you'll be able to understand either written or spoken text easily. One more question, sir. Yes, Raghavendra Adoni from Facebook. Okay. How many words should an English teacher know? How many words? <laughs> so as I said earlier in my slide, one of the slides, it is, not the, it is not the number of words alone, but the word families. So as a teacher um, or as a learner, I would call myself a senior learner probably. So as a learner, I think that if I have about 10,000 word families, I should be happy teaching, right? But the more the better. And again, I'm telling you, it is not just words, word families. So compete, competition, competitive, uncompetitive, competitive, they are, they are just one number, not 10. Yeah. Yes, Sanjay, is there any question yeah. again? Uh, no question from Facebook now. Okay, okay now yeah. I, I request uh, uh, Sanjay. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, so, yeah. so, yeah. so, before, before Tadas, that, Tadas. before yeah. that, so I, it's my uh, uh, question that as a teacher, um, uh, we have to deal with the vocabulary that is there in the textbook, uh, or rather the poems and the lessons. So, how a teacher should deal with that vocabulary? The one that you said is for the enrichment. I can understand. Uh, yeah, uh, there is no the no limit to that. But then we are limited, confined to the words that are there in the textbook. So how to deal with um, uh, that particular thing, meaning and uh, uh, all such things of the given words in the text? Yeah, thank you for that question. In fact, uh, we have to devote some time during our teaching to vocabulary study strategies yes. because it is impossible for teachers to teach every word in detail right i'm sure yes. you'll agree with me that yes. teachers have to teach the content teachers have to prepare students for examination then there are quite a few activities given in textbooks they're also fantastic useful right yes because all people who prepare textbooks are also highly qualified and competent people 
so they must have thought about uh, something while creating those activities so teachers have to carry out those activities and and right? there are some there are some of them in this present group yeah obviously so so you have framed the textbooks yeah i am honored to be in this group they, they, and they i i am a little scared also how no 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 so uh, <laughs> so it is important to spend some time teaching how to learn vocabulary what yes. are the strategies what are the techniques for example etymology etymology is study of roots of words like origin of words now yes. if you teach that word if you teach how to study it's so easy for them to you know come to the meaning automatically without your help yes. so developing vocabulary study strategies should be the goal so in fact when i used to teach uh, at school i taught luckily at all the levels at primary school secondary college university and in corporate world also so i always used to tell my students that i am going to teach you two things one teaching the lesson for examination and teaching the lesson for life yeah yeah yes sir yes sir so going beyond the words on the page and the pictures on the page that's so important thank you for that question yeah nice is my pleasure thank you sir thank you for all yes sanjay yes, sir yes sir yes on the word of thanks yeah thank you <laughs> really pleased sir really pleased it was uh, the most awaited session for us the teachers of maharashtra uh, so really thank you so much uh, honorable dignitaries who attended today's session and uh, most valued guest uh, it's my privilege propose the vote of thanks uh, on behalf of emelta really we uh, want to express our uh, humble gratitude towards honorable amendra shet sir really you are uh, playing a role of role model for all the teachers of india and abroad i, I expect what uh, a nice session sir it was uh, you spoke about the words earlier to this i used to think actions speak more than words but now i am uh, thinking that words can speak more than better than the actions <laughs> really sir it was a very nice session for all of us uh, on all aspects you spoke about the words why should we know the word how should we study the words basically uh, the the thing which uh, appealed to me what do you know when you say you know a word you spoke about different things Uh, related to its meaning its grammatical pattern its affixes lexical sets collocations and uh, all the aspects of the word basically uh, the teacher of english should know all these things sir and um, much more you have really you are a, a, a portion of uh, words and the knowledge related no oh, i think we should stop now it's fine thank you i am just a senior yeah, learner yeah, we are yes. all in the same boat yeah. thank you i am joy yeah, yeah 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 we heard much about you and now uh, we visualized and we experienced what you are uh, thank you so much once again uh, you talked about many things sir uh, and it was really uh, a very nice very valuable session uh, for all of us you spoke about uh, uh, three uh, basic uh, uh, memories also acrostic memory visual memory we we, we don't have we don't yeah. have vocabulary to describe that yeah, yeah. <laughs> really really yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah i mean the words yeah i mean the words i feel embarrassed yeah i'm trying to collect the words to speak about the words really sir it was a very valuable session for all of us once again i i express my humble gratitude towards you on behalf of himelta and the teachers of maharashtra uh, thank you so much i also express my humble gratitude towards our mentor our guide uh, dr umesh pradhan sir sir really sir uh, he is always with us and i i think all these sessions uh, are just backed by him he is he is uh, just promoting us is uh, just giving us uh, everything that he he has uh, uh, and his perfect expert opinion which gave uh, which he gave today thank you so much dr pradhan sir 
and today we have one uh, imminent uh, uh, guest <laughs> honorable uh, sheshra bade sir uh, education officer of thane he is with yeah. us so yeah. welcome and thank you so much honorable uh, bade sir uh, he was uh, thank you sir as in early sessions also and now such officers are uh, there with us uh, in maharashtra and we expect more officers to join with us because we are doing something for the teachers honorable dr pradhan sir sahib ram ajan sir email cha committee members and the speakers and the guests like you we are doing something for the teachers uh, uh, in this uh, period of covid 19 and thank you so much sir um, thanks to bade sir to speak yeah uh, bade sir please will you uh, share your opinion uh, okay. yeah. thank you sir yes sir yeah bade sir thank you very much sir respected dr dharmendra sets today's session is very useful uh, for all teachers uh, i think uh, sahib ram ajan sir and uh, umesh pradhan sir chavan sir and all members of emelta groups uh, arrange this activity is very uh, will make the students interested in english subject absolutely commendable undertaking my best wishes for this activity uh, thanks sir and thanks all of you okay. thank you sir thank you, thank you very much for joining us our uh, webinar thank yeah, you sir. yeah thank you so much sir thank yes, you sir okay. yeah i also express my humble gratitude towards uh, all the dignitaries who attended today's session uh people were waiting for this session and in the very beginning the room was full sir so <laughs> thank you so much i also express my humble gratitude towards our president our leader sahib ram ajan sir for his unending efforts uh, to uh, take the teachers towards uh, the bank of knowledge and uh, uh, towards the people uh, who are working for english uh, like you sir thank you so much sahib ram ajan sir i also express my gratitude towards all the email cha committee members mr avinash rede sir ashpak ma kaji sir uh, manoj naikwadi mohan kulte sir saili mahajan ma'am and all the email cha committee members and very importantly i would like to express my gratitude towards all the participants from all sides of maharashtra and the country also uh, he met a joined by some people from uh, abroad also yeah from oman and uh, such countries they are joining now so i also express my gratitude towards honorable anil dalal sir naresh walan sir who are expert in english and many more people uh, shikha bavish ma'am who is there and all these people once again, thank you so much he met a expresses humble gratitude towards honorable dr dharmendra sheikh sir once again over to mahajan sir yes sir yes. thank you very much sir uh, all the participants requested that tomorrow again we have a one more um, very interesting session webinar uh, tomorrow in the evening at 5 o'clock so please do much have a wonderful day thank you for joining thank you dr thank you sir and said sir thank you thank a lot thank you pradhan sir thank you pradhan i will be in contact with bade sir sure <laughs> yeah, yeah. bade sir thank you <laughs>